back in the 1990s, when I was married to my first husband, he had been in radio his entire life, and it had always been his dream to own his own little radio station. Well, an opportunity came up for us to purchase a little AM radio station. It was in a, a pretty major market um, area, so there was lots of potential for listeners and all. But if you know anything about radio, trying to to sell <laughs> a little AM radio station, and it was just a daytimer, um, it's challenging. But he was enthusiastic, ready to take on the challenge, and so we took our kids and everything we had and, and uh, then his brother and his wife and their kids, they took everything they had and we all poured into this, to this station and um, we put a black gospel format on it. That's what we had felt we wanted to do, which was interesting because we were all white. And so when people would come into the radio station, it would be like a, Ah, uh, you guys are white. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I go, oh my word, when did that happen? <laughs> I mean, I've always had a weird sense of humor. But anyway, um, this this radio station, we worked really hard at it. We, we threw everything into it. We were there for about two and, and a half years, I think. Two, two and a half years, I don't remember now for sure. But um, while we were there, we found out that originally this radio station had belonged to this elderly man and his wife, and another group had come in and cheated him out of the station. And so we started feeling like maybe part of why we were there doing this was to help restore to this man and his wife what had been taken from them. And I do, to this day, I think that that is a lot of why we were there. Now, it was a hard road. Um, it was very hard to sell, like I said, and, and even when we did sell it, a lot of times people didn't, didn't always want to pay their bills. And, uh, you know, when I say sell it, you know, selling advertising on it, that, you know, is how you, you know, pay the bills. And we sold uh, different time slots that programs would play and all. And anyway, a lot happened while we were there those couple of years we went through a lot and and this what i'm going to talk about today is faith and i want to tell you right now if you are involved in a ministry or you're trying to do something for the lord it does not mean that it's a guarantee that it's all going to go well some people think oh that you know well i'm doing this for the lord so everything's going to be great so if something's not great if it gets hard or if we're struggling to meet the bills you know it must be because something's wrong or maybe this isn't what god wants us to do you guys read the bible a lot of people when they were serving god and when they were doing things for him and feeling the call on their life it was not easy it was hard Joseph, back in the Old Testament, needed to get to Egypt so that he could become the second most powerful man in the world and, and uh, s save people from starvation and bring wealth into Egypt so that on down the road when Moses was leading the children out of, of Egypt, there would be the wealth of Egypt for them to take with them to the promised land. You know, it's too much to explain it all here, but I'm telling you, it's never easy. It was, maybe sometimes it is. But it isn't always easy. And just because it's hard does not mean you're not where God wants you to be. you got to trust him in the hard things. That's, that's faith. Okay, so um, Joseph, you know, he was sold in, by his brothers into slavery. He was falsely accused of, uh, you know, going after a woman. He was put in prison. I mean, he went through a lot to get where he was supposed to be in Egypt. It wasn't easy. But he was doing the right thing. And uh, even though it didn't look like everything was going his way. And then you had, you know, take Moses and the children of Israel and all the years of going through the wilderness, you know, um, God fed him. And, you know, he made sure they had water, but they still had to walk. They had to travel. They had to do a lot of things. It, I'm sure, was not always easy or comfortable living in tents all the time when they were used to having homes. No. It can, you know, I've got other video. It, it can cost to follow Jesus. It does cost to follow Jesus. And as long as you are doing, following the conviction that you believe in your heart is what God would have you to do, you go for it. Even when it's hard, you go through the hard times. And sometimes you go without. There's 
very few successful people that don't have the hard time stories to tell you of how they got to where they are. So just a little word of encouragement there. Well, for us, it was no different. It, it was hard. And for, for our family, we ended up to where eventually we couldn't afford to even have a home anymore. And so, uh, we were living in an apartment at the time we had to, at the end of our lease, we did not renew it and we had no place to go. And so what we did was we ended up just, well, we sold just about everything we had. We had been selling everything we had to try and make ends meet. I even remember um, our kids setting up a yard sale out front of the radio station for about a week with their stuff. Not that we told them to do that because we didn't. That was their idea that they wanted to sell some of their things to help bring in money to help out. And so they had had done that. So we were <clears throat> down to where we had very, very few uh, possessions left. And so we just kind of made a little, you know, a little space where we could sleep at night. And so the radio station was a day timer. So when the sun went down, you know, then the station went off the air and everybody went home and we pulled out, you know, our mattresses and whatever and, and uh, you know, and made a place for ourselves to sleep. And this, this radio station was in an old house that had been converted into a radio station. It was filled with mold. It was very unhealthy in there, and I'm sure it, it was on the verge of being condemned. It probably should have already been condemned. But we had a bathroom, and the bathroom actually had a shower in it, so we had that. And then the kitchen, um, the cabinets were there and stuff, but there was no appliances. And so we had uh, a little skillet that we paid $3 for at Goodwill, an electric skillet that we cooked on. Um, the kids were playing in a garbage pile under the carport of this radio station, and they found a little tiny refrigerator that actually worked. It held about a gallon of milk, so we had that, and our small microwave. And that was our our cooking facilities. So it was it, it was a tough time for all of us. It truly was. And we had a smelly old dog that had to live in that radio station with us too, but he was our, you know, security system. So, um, while we were there, we were, uh, there was a lot of churches that were very supportive of this radio station, not financially, but they, you know, would get their congregation, you know, aware of it. And a lot of them would listen black and white churches. And, but a lot of these churches were very strong on faith. Faith is everything. And if you have true faith in God, you know, then you'll have everything you could, your heart's desires, you know, that God, he wants you to live in a fancy home. He wants you to drive an expensive car. He wants you to have the, the finer things of life. And this was, was their belief. And then here we are with losing everything. And so there was one particular pastor's wife that decided that we just didn't understand faith. And so she was going to educate me so that I could help my family. You know, it's that, or maybe we were living in sin and dishonoring God, but you know, this did not go with her belief system. And so, um, she had come by one, one day, I mean, they had taken us to their home, showed us their fancy, beautiful home, the big Christmas tree with all the gifts under the tree, the pantry full of food, gave us a tour. And then, you know, said, this is what God wants for you. And if you'll just have faith in him, this is what he'll give you. And then sent us home. And I remember my kids were really, really upset over that. I mean, I probably was too, but I was more concerned about my, my kids. So I wasn't really thinking about how I felt about it because I was listening to how they felt. Mom, dad, we're not going to have Christmas. And they had all those gifts. And, you know, we thought maybe they were going to give us a, each a gift for Christmas. And, and then we're hungry. We don't even, we don't know what we're going to eat for, you know, for a meal today. And they had all that food and they didn't even ask us to, if we wanted a sandwich and, you know, and they really, um, they really saw things in actually, I think, a very grown up way to assess it. And so to them, they felt that that was kind of a cruel thing to have done to our family. And it, it really um, had hurt them. And so, you know, and I agree with them. I do. And, and it made me think, you know, how often have I been in, you know, insensitive to maybe somebody else's need? I don't want to be insensitive 
So anyway, this same woman came by the radio station one day and said, I want to take you to lunch. And I said, great, I would love to go to lunch because my husband and I often, somebody would come by and want to take one of us to lunch and our, cause they knew we were having hard times and we would agree to it. You know, our agreement was you go, you get whatever you're going to get, eat half and bring the other half home in a doggy bag for the family and the dog. And uh, so, you know, she took me to um, a mall where a food court so we could choose whatever we wanted, you know, and because she had her kids with her. And so they all figured what they wanted. And I, I chose something that I thought that my whole family would, was most likely to enjoy. And so we got our meals and she paid for it, which was good because I didn't have not a penny to my name, literally did not have. A penny to my name and she knew it and that was the whole thing you know she was going to take me to lunch so she paid for it and sat down and then she began to say I want to explain faith to you and so she said you know it's like when you need to turn the light on you go over to that switch you flip the switch and somehow electricity goes from that switch through the wires and up to the light and then turns the light on now we don't know how it works but we know it will work and so by faith we flip that switch and she, you know, and she said, and then, and I said, wait, let, let me stop you here for a minute. And she goes, yeah. And I go, are you now going to tell me about the, the, tr the chair one, how God, you know, that our faith is that God made that tree strong enough and the carpenter wise enough to know how to build, you know, and talented enough to build that chair so that it would hold us up so that we can have faith when we sit down in that chair, even though we don't understand how the tree grew or what tree it was or how the carpenter put it together and that. She goes, yeah. Yeah. And I go, yes. I go, I, I, and she goes, that's right. That's, that's what faith is. And she seems surprised that I knew that. And I said, well, I know, you know, I was taught those analogies growing up, going to Sunday school. They taught us that. And I said, and I used to believe that, but I don't believe that anymore. And she's like, oh, now we're getting to the problem. Okay. So tell me about it. Why, why don't you believe that? I said, well, because we're talking about faith in God. And she said, yes, he made the electricity. He made, and I go, yeah, I know that. But in truth, that's faith in a switch, some wiring and a light or a tree, a carpenter and a chair. And see, the problem is the switch, the wires, the light, the tree, the carpenter and the chair, they're all gone. They're not in my life anymore. The resources are gone. So now all I have is God. And it's, it's taught me what faith really is. And she said, and so she's just kind of looking puzzled at me. I said, see, for me now, faith is when there's absolutely nothing there. And God says, I want you to sit down and trust me to hold you up. And I go, and I sit down and he holds me up, even though there's nothing there. Well, that kind of puzzled her, and maybe blew her away a little bit. And she didn't quite know what to do with it because see, she had never had to live like that. Oh, she had not always had the nicest house that she had now, or she didn't always, what, what, she drove a BMW or a Mercedes, I don't remember which now, but a, a, an expensive car, and she didn't always have that, you know, and, you know, she had had lesser things, but she'd always had resources. And she finally was like, I guess I've got nothing to teach you. You know, you, maybe you can teach me. And I said, I only know because I'm having to live that way. And I said, it's not easy to live like this. Not at all. But every single day, God provides for my family. Every single day, we experience miracles. And I said, tonight, because you came by and took me to lunch, and I'm only eating a small portion of this because I didn't eat half. I just ate a little portion, but I could have eaten half if I wanted, I suppose. But I said, I'm taking the rest home to my family and they're going to enjoy it because they need to eat. So see the Lord, you were my miracle today. And I go tomorrow, there'll be another miracle. And it was, I tell you every single day, we never missed a meal. We had no food. We had no money, but we never missed a meal. God miraculously fed us every single day and he provided for all our other needs which I'll I'll be telling you some of of those stories too but um that's what I want to leave with today that 
we tend to put our faith in our resources, I think, in reality. I know that I have resources in my life now, and I, I know that often I'm putting my faith in that. And um, where our faith really needs to be is in God. I've got a plaque on a, a guest room wall that says, you'll never know God's all you need until God is all you have. And so that's what I want to leave you with today because it's very possible that we will see times like that where all we have is him. And if we don't know how to trust him, ah, you want to learn as soon as you can because that's the hard part is learning to trust. But once you see that you can sit down and he'll hold you up, yeah, that you can have no food, but he'll feed you. It's pretty amazing. And there's no other way I'd want to be. It's it That experience has changed so much in me and in what I want and, and don't want in life and how I feel about things. So just a little something to leave you with today. Um, I hope you have a great day. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the like button. It encourages me. Um, I, I see that I've had some people in Turkey that have watched these videos and some people in India that have watched them. That's amazing. So if you're outside of the U.S., which is where I'm at, and you're watching these, hello. <laughs> it's amazing to me to think I can be sitting in my little office and talking to people somewhere else in the world. So anyway, hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with your friends. And I will talk to you later. Have a great day.